Hello, in this video I want to take a look at Dano. You are probably wondering what this Dano is, um, and the same for me. Um, I was also uh, looking at um, my Twitter feed, and this particular tweet um, landed from um, the official Dano um, Twitter account. Um, Dano is a secure JavaScript and TypeScript runtime. Now. What that means is that um, if you come from a JavaScript world, you already know that we have a thing called Node.js. Node.js is a way to run uh, JavaScript outside of your browser. And nowadays, um, lots and lots of things, lots of web applications are being powered by Node.js. So why this new thing called Dano or Dino? Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I want to look uh, into in this video. Um, I played with this for about an hour today and I thought it'd be good to, um, to just record a, a quick video um, to see uh, what my experiences are um, and, and kind of do a little bit of a forward, um, forward looking, um, yeah, kind of think about how, how this could be implemented. Of course, Node.js is kind of everywhere, so the f I don't think Deno will, in the next months, maybe in the next years, be implemented everywhere. But um, it has some it has some really good potential, and I quite liked it what I had so far. So this is from the official uh, Deno Twitter. Now, if we go to the um, Deno web page, it's it's fairly minimal, and it tells it's a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. Now. You probably wonder what is so special about Dano. Well, Dano is um, built um, and created by one of the authors or the creators of Node.js, Ryan Dahl. And um, Ryan, uh, he uh, held a really good conference talk at JSConf EU uh, a few months ago. And um, the title of that uh, video, and I'll put it in the description, is 10 Things I Regret About Node.js. So he basically built and, and started building Dano as a response to the problems of uh, Node.js. So in this video, he explained 10 reasons why he thinks um, Node.js could do with a little update, and that is Dano. And um, in this video, I want, to, I want to take a look at, at those kinds of um, issues and how it's kind of being solved with Dano. Now, um, mentioned uh, Dano is a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. So Dano is built on top of Rust, uh, whilst Node.js is built on top of, um, I think it's C++. Yeah, Node is um, on top of C++. Um, Dano's core has been written in Rust. Um, and it, um, it natively supports TypeScript. It's also similar to Node.js using the V8 uh, engine from Chrome. Um, to it, that's the JavaScript runtime. Um, now, let's first of all see how we can install Dano. And that's actually fairly easy. Um, I'm running on a Mac. Um, you can do brew install Dano. Um, it will run some packages and in a, a few seconds you have Dano running and you can start doing stuff. Um, I have my terminal here. I can see I'm in a new uh, folder uh, called Dano. And how Dano works is, is different than in um, Node.js. So some of the problems um, that um, Node.js had is um, kind of the um, build step, but also the, the module system. So whenever you have a Node.js project, you have a package.json, which kind of tracks the um, it tracks the versions of the packages that you're using and you have kind of a bloated folder sitting somewhere called node modules. And that is different in Dano. Dano um, actually reads everything from um, a particular server. It's just a, a URL that you use. So how that works is, for example, now I've installed Dano already and we can run a simple program by just running Dano run and then this kind of welcome um, script. So we can see it runs it from a particular location and then welcome.ts. Now you'll see what's gonna happen if I run that. It's gonna say welcome to Dano. Now I've run this script um, now more than once and you probably think like, oh, 
if I have if I don't have internet, I can't access this. Well, what Dana will do, it will cache it for you. And you can always, um, if you append some parameters to it by dash dash reload, it will reload it again for you from the URL. Otherwise, it will cache it for you. Now, this is a very simple uh, program, welcome.ts. So let's actually create that ourselves. So if I hop into Visual Studio Code, what I've done in VS Code is I've installed a little package that helps with the IntelliSense of um, Deno. And um, I've installed kind of the first one that had uh, that was on the list and it had um, a lot of um, downloads. So it's called De uh, Deno from just Java, um, from just JavaScript probably. Um, and this kind of helps you with the, the IntelliSense. Now, if I hop back into VS Code, let's create a new um, file. And I told you it has TypeScript out of the box. So I can create a file, say, um, welcome.ts, so similar to what they had. And now we can just type anything. So we can say console.log, then we can say like, hello YouTube. Hit save. Now, in order to run this, um, what I can do is I'm in the same folder here, I can type in Deno, which you normally do note, and then you say, um, welcome. It's gonna compile it, so it's gonna cache it somewhere. Now it's gonna say, hello YouTube, and the next time I run this, you will see it, it uses that cached version. So then it says, hello YouTube. Now, this is just, um, just JavaScript, right? Console.log. Um, I'll actually see how we can create, say, a folder. So, and this is probably where Dano comes in very useful as well, is at the moment, quite a lot of kind of the utility uh, scripts that we create are being done in Python. But with um, Dano, we can probably um, move that towards JavaScript. So let me show you how that works. So if we say create uh, folder.ts, we can also create JS files. So you can also run uh, the same welcome.js and uh, that will work as well. Um, and I'll have uh, create folder. And in order to, to run this, and what is pretty cool about Dano is that it has um, high level async await. So async await um, and promises are native to Dano. It's one of the issues that uh, Ryan Dahl had, or the, one of the regrets that he had, was that he didn't stick to promises. So what we can do is we can type, and this is high level uh, async await. So we can say await, and then we have the Dano namespace. And then if I do Dano dot, because it's using TypeScript, you get access to this IntelliSense. So you can see I get all of these um, kind of methods. Um, so we can say, for example, um, copy, if you want to copy something. Um, but that's quite cool. The one that we want to do is mkdir. So you can see in the intelligence, and this is also the package that I installed, it tells us await dano.mkdir. So if I do mkdir, and then we want to say the new folder that we're going to create is, um, let's call it new folder. Hit save. And now we can see this, it looks like JavaScript, but normally when you have async await, you need to create a function. So you need to create an async function, and then you need to return something in that function. But you don't have to do that here in Deno. So if I now do um, Deno, and I say create folder, um, now what we're going to see is actually an error message. And this is one of the other things that makes Deno um, kind of interesting. And that is um, one of the other things that Brian found that he um, missed about node is security out of the box so because what you have with dano is you don't have access to um, writing to your uh, disk you don't have access to the internet by default um, and a few other things so accessing other files for example you need to give explicit rights to do that so in order to actually execute this file of this folder uh, the creation of this folder sorry i need to write dano and then I do dash dash, oh, dash dash allow dash write. And then I uh, put in the name of the folder, which is my create folder. 
If I now hit enter, um, you will see that now in my VS code as well, I have a new folder. So it has that security in there by default. Now, another thing that I'd like to look at is um, how to fetch data from, a, uh, from an API. And maybe in a future video, I'll, I'll look at how to create a server. Now, let's create a new file. And I'm going to call this uh, fetchdata.ts. And what I want to do is I want to make an API request to uh, this kind of fake API JSON placeholder. And what we have here is um, a URL. So here we can see this is the, the URL that I want to use. And in order to do that, we can just write without having an async function. So how that would work is if we say constant uh, response equals await and it has the fetch API inbuilt. So here we can see uh, we have the we're waiting for the response. Then we're saying we're getting a JSON response back. So we need to wait. Um, so the double, double promise when we use fetch. Um, so await, await, and let's then console.log JSON. Okay. So this is the response. It gets it from this one. It waits and it parses it out as JSON. So it's a double promise. And then it's doing console.log. Now, you'll see what's going to happen if I run this. If I do deno fetch data.ts, I get another error message. However, this error message is these are pretty cool, pretty good actually. It tells me that I now need to allow making external calls to kind of the internet. So what I need to do is I can say um, deno dash dash allow dash net, um, and then we can type in fetch data.ts. Now, if I do that, we can see I'm getting, in this case, this is a, a JavaScript, um, what is it, an API that gives you some to-dos. And here we can see we get an object back. Um, and that's the, that's the correct one, the one that we were looking for. Uh, now, you don't always have to give explicit permission. Um, there's also a parameter that you can set. And then um, basically all of the um, security um, is kind of being accepted. So um, that was a little quick introduction to, um, to Deno. Um, I've only played with it for about an hour or two now. Um, it's a really interesting approach. Um, as I mentioned, um, Node.js is everywhere and Node.js is not going away, uh, nor do I think Node.js needs to go away. Uh, but it's good that there's another uh, runtime that kind of fixes the flaws of Node.js. If we go to the official um, Dano page, you can also see, um, for example, here it's creating a server. So here we can see it's import surf from a URL. So we don't use, in this case for Dano, there's no NPM. So it's not centralized. The packages are not being centralized. It's a decentralized approach to serving external files, or so external packages. Again, as I mentioned, um, it will um, cache it if you run this the second time. So this is, for example, what we in Node.js just use Express, and this is a way to uh, create a quick uh, web server. And you can see this. This looks uh, very much like like JavaScript. Um, there are already quite a lot of standard modules. Um, so these standard modules are in there uh, by default. So for example, FS is working with the uh, file system. Same for Path. Um, so those are the, the kind of the, the, um, the standard ones. We also have third party. This would be comparable with, for example, NPM. So there are already at the moment 220 third party modules. Um, and um, there's like lots around a better framework for creating web applications. But I've also seen already ones that do things with uh, AWS Lambda or AWS DynamoDB. So um, it's good that there's an um, uptake in um, those kinds of uh, places because those modules are, are kind of very needed and they kind of need to be a, a copy of um, what's in Node.js. Now, um, why am I filming uh, or recording this little video today? 
is that um, this was um, this tweet uh, says that version one is um, due to be released May the 13th. Um, at the time of recording is May 6th, so that's in about a week or so. Um, so that's the very first version of this. Um, so it's quite interesting to to kind of immediately start playing with this and, and understanding more what this can do. I'll probably record some more videos uh, in the future.